What is it? Focus on the chord. What is the chord? Okay? For us, it is these three elements, and notice we did not put one as a chord, we put the three. We think you need all three together. Now, what are these three? I'll explain them in more detail in, uh, in a few minutes. But you need to have the core for product management in order to establish a proper system for product management within an organization, you need to have a, the trio or at least the blue. The competence is definitely a plus, but many people struggle with this as a starting point. Then, around the core, we have what we call the tools and technology aspects. These are the things that support what's inside the core. You know, the template, the form, the software, the iPad I see around the room. Those kind of technology, it help us improve and enhance the way we do things, but not necessarily make it more effective. Okay? You cannot manage a project better because you just use MS Project or Primavera. Okay? You can do it maybe faster because you are using those tools. Then we have the knowledge management aspect, which probably looked up quite a bit about this, but it's not only about learning. Learning is a huge component part of it, but there's also the historical data, the historical record, which is part of learning, by the way. But let's look at more hardware or technical issues. Uh, the databases, but again, I would emphasize what Luke said, the database is not enough. The use of the material, the use of the database, the knowledge sharing, the lessons learned, uh, the, all these aspects in helping us to improve project consistently across the organization. Then we have what we call the people the leadership aspects. Okay. How do we take the leadership? Who has the leadership? How can we do it? How can we develop people? What kind of development program we need to institute? Anything related to professional development and leadership development. We talked about, uh, I mentioned that yesterday, one thing I don't like about product management is the name. Okay, because when we think of product management, we think management. But in reality, we all know there's a huge difference between management and leadership. And ideally, we need both. It cannot be project leadership alone, it cannot be project management alone. How can we merge the two together? So we need to focus on leadership aspect. Whether we are managing a single project, or whether we are dealing with an organizational system. And obviously, the outer ring is the strategic and organizational aspect, or I use Luke terminology, inspire, lead and learn, okay? And the rest of it is supported, I guess. We use uh, his analogy. If you look at global research, you look research on PMO. I said, what is the problem with PMOs? What is the problem with PMOs are not implementing in methodology, okay? So the part of methodology is important. The bad news is there are not many known methodologies around the world that are published. Because usually the methodology is an internal endeavor. A company do it internally. Now what's published around the world and well known is Prince2 as a methodology. Okay? Now there are a lot of people here into product management, into the PMI system, but they are finding out PMI doesn't have methodology. PMI have what they call a framework. So we have developed our own methodology that kind of aligned to PMI, but is not limited to PMI. Okay. Now, this is an approach, Prince 2 is an approach, that's why we say method, you can have camp, you can have other method, such as Prince 2. Uh, Ericsson, I think, have uh, oops, props. They call it props, and actually Ericsson probably one of the few companies that actually publish it on the internet. Uh, 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 yesterday we were meeting with people from oil and gas, they have something called VAP, which is value assurance practices. So there are different methodology out there, but most of it is usually internal within a company, it's not public, not published, and not shared. Okay. Whatever methodology you, you use, up to you. You can develop your own. You can take Prince 2, you can take this, you can build your own, or you can take any of these three and combine them and see what is the benefit of each one of them, and then create your own from a merger of the three. If it's better fit your culture. Okay. But that's the starting point. Now what does the methodology does for us? Help us take a product from idea to closure. That's the importance of the methodology. Okay. Which is a big picture. How do you take a product from idea to closure? It give us that framework, if you wish, or the guide, the big picture uh, uh, image for the project. Then we need the processes and function. Now I know how to take product from idea to closure, 
But during the process, during this journey, there are many things I need to do. I need to develop breakdown structure, I need to do risk management, I need to do budget, I need to do uh, scheduling, I need to do human resource staffing, I need to do requirement definition, I need to do uh, project management planning. Where do I do them? And how do I do them? Usually, sources like process and function, such as PMI framework, okay, the Pumba guide, for those who are familiar with it, it helps us know about these things. The Pumba guide tells us we need a WBS, but doesn't tell us how many times do we use a WBS and where do we need a WBS. The Pumba guide will tell us we need risk management, but doesn't tell us where do we do risk management. Okay? They tell us to do it in planning, but that's it. But where is planning? Is this planning here? Or is it here? Or is it here? Okay. That's a big question. I'll be happy to talk about it after the break if you like. Planning is everywhere. But if you read the Pumba guide, you'll think planning is done only once in the project life cycle. Okay? So what we are saying is, if you read the Pumba guide and live and swear by it, it's not enough. And if you go by a methodology alone, maybe it's not enough. Okay? So how can we combine the learning from both? <laughs> From two in a way, it tries to combine the two, but it's not doesn't get into looking or more into branch two. It doesn't get into enough probably the detailed processes that maybe PMI get into. Yeah. Now the third component is competence. What do we mean by competence is a big word. Competence is that if we are a company who are willing to be more sophisticated about this, is what kind of competency system we want to put in place for the people who are involved in the project in order to ensure that these people know how to manage projects. What do I need to train them on? What do I need to develop them on? What learning programs they have to embark on? But competency is usually used in order for something to assess. And because the term assessment is for a lot of people is still something that they don't want to go that far, Maybe competency is not many organizations actually implement competency program. But if you don't want to implement a full competency program, at the minimum, can you implement some basic performance criteria? Uh, you asked a question earlier about sustainability and how do we sustain things for the long term in the organization. I think if I understood that question correctly. How can we sustain if you don't have a culture of accountability and a culture of learning and culture, a culture of performance. People, you have a new system, new ideas. If performance is not going to be measured, why would we care? Many of us, unfortunately, human nature is, if I'm watched, if I know I'm going to be measured and assessed, I'll probably pay more attention. Okay? We are in the training business, and often enough, we always have no show in the class. Last two weeks, I was doing classes where there was certification at the end. Not a single person no show. Why? Because they know they don't show, if they're not in the class, they don't attend full time, they will want to be assessed at the end, and they will not earn the certification. Not a single no show. Okay? Now, is this good? Is it policing? Unfortunately, we need police. If we don't need police, you know, there will be definitely, if we are all perfect and we're not going to commit any crime in the market, then fine, we don't need police. But in management and organization, we need some kind of control systems in place. Okay? So competency is one way we can measure assessment of the area of product management and we insist on it and hold people accountable to deliver on what we are assessing them. Obviously, as competency is not one rule, it's usually graded based like a maturity model on a learner versus a higher level versus a higher level versus a higher level. Bottom line, this is a big topic. I will leave it at that right now just for introducing this concept for you. Uh, a good source, if you're interested in competency, IPMA, another product management association, uh, they have something called IPMA uh, Competence Baseline, or ICB for short. Okay. Uh, it's an excellent source if you want to get into competency information. The Australian Institute for Product Management, they have a system. Uh, the American, uh, I think they called, uh, I forget what it's called, there is uh, an organization called the American Society for the Advancement of Product Management. They have, I think they call the National uh, Standard Baseline or comp uh, Competency Baseline. I can't remember the exact name for it, but it's all to include the competency model that it could be used if you don't want to develop your own. Okay? So there are ICB or IPMA, and then, or you can develop your own. 
When I was in Aramco, this is what we did for product engineering, cost engineering, we developed our own competency baseline. Yeah. If we start looking outside, it's pretty easy to explain here, not much. Tools and technology, issues rate, template, checklist, process map, flowchart, mind map, software. Basically, what we are looking here for things in order not to read better. <coughs> you want to create the system that everybody can use within the organization, and then everybody would use, and you continue to improve. Knowledge management, again, Luke talked about it quite a bit. The learning, the historical data, uh, the information sharing, the community of practice, uh, all of these are factors that could belong into, into knowledge management. And leadership and uh, people aspect, I already explained briefly as well. Uh, there is no, here there is no reference, there's hundreds of books on leadership and management. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, on and leadership as well, Tim Blanchard uh, and uh, Peter Singhi. And, uh, and Peter Singhi is more on uh, uh, knowledge management and system thinking. And uh, there are many, many references, so I'm not going to reference one. There is not a single source here that I can tell you would be a good source uh, for you. And people in leadership the same way. Strategic aspect as well. Luke was talking about the uh, Sam Houston program, uh, Stanford, there are many other strategic initiatives and strategic uh, planning uh, systems out there and how it helps in the area of project management.